Hi, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Mike Van Orden, founder of Comic Art Mastery. Uh, this video will be about how to draw a female. I've been getting a lot of requests and questions about how to draw females since I tend to draw mostly male or masculine characters. I thought I would break down the female for you. Um, so let's just, I just found this photo online and I'm just going to break it down. Uh, a few things. So, you know, the three things, uh, first three are, we have our three masses, right? So we have our head, our upper chest or torso, and our pelvis, right? So these are our three uh, main major masses. And what the importance is, is of these masses is how they connect to one, one another and how they create balance and movement. So these masses typically don't change shape. So we have our, our chest, we have our pelvis, and then we have our, our head. Now the head moves because it has a jaw, the chest moves because it contracts as it breathes and expands, and then the pelvis moves because it twists, but generally those are three solid masses. So uh, let's go ahead and break down a few more. Okay, so what I'll do here is let's, let's pay attention to a couple shapes and a couple things to keep in mind because when you're drawing a masculine male character, um, you are, you're basically, you're not too concerned with your lines because even if you draw too many lines, it's okay. But when you draw a female, uh, one line can change the whole age of the female. So a couple things to look at and take note of are, you know, we have our our center line. We have our, our clavicle, which connects to her shoulders, right? Shoulders are generally closer together than a male. Pay attention to the arms, how they go inward, typically, and then outward, and they kind of flow along the shape of her body. Same, they follow her, her hips. Her upper torso is right about here. And if we were to lower the opacity of this sketch or the photo, it might make it a little bit easier for you to see. Um, and then as we drop down here, we have our pelvis. And then from the pelvis, we have our legs that also turn in, right? So these are the types of things that we want to keep in mind. Now, typically the female neck is more narrow. Now she's got this trap muscle here and trap muscle here that's connecting. But in general, we want to keep the everything pretty narrow and close to the body, okay? And that's a really big difference between that and the male. Whereas if I were to demo a quick male, uh, you would have the head, uh, you'd have a wider chest, wider shoulders. The arms would bow out generally. And then we have our pelvis and then our legs in the male typically spread out to shoulder width apart. So, and then our neck's going to be wider on the character on the uh, on the male character than it is on a female. Generally speaking, and this is applying to you know typical comic book style art. Now in real life, everyone comes in all different shapes and sizes, so we're not trying to take a cookie cutter approach. But this is just general knowledge. And um, so what we'll do from here is let's go over a couple more female traits. Um, I'll sketch uh, a female head. Let's see, we are at four minutes. I want to keep these pretty short. Okay, so female head. Um, let's draw it loose. Let's see, am I on the right one? Okay, good. So I'll typically draw a circular shape, draw a line down the middle if she's face forward. Depending on how narrow her face is, I'll draw a small chin and kind of keep that egg shape going. Um, I will also draw a eye line. Now, if this is your underdrawing, you can draw two big eye sockets 
in between you can draw where her eye her nose would be right and then that nose would come down to about this line and then underneath would be her mouth and what we're doing here is we're just establishing information finding where things go we know that her ears would pop right around here and then her eyes her actual eyes would appear to be inside right and so we take these little guidelines and we're not too worried about them because these are our under drawings. So if you're drawing with pencil and paper, you can always come back and, you know, you'll erase these under sketches. Now, depending on her mood, you know, her eyebrows could raise or lower, you know, can go down here, go up here, up, up to us. Um, so now we have the basic structure. We have our information under here. We can put our neck. Right, and then now we have enough information. If we want her hairline, we could add some hair. If she has long hair, throw that information in here. We don't have to perfect anything. We're just, it could be scribbly, it could be really crude. It doesn't matter as long as you can see as the artist what you're doing. So then I would lower the opacity, which is the equivalent of erasing and leaving a ghost of the sketch behind. And then just jumping up, a into a new layer or at this point I would say sharpen your pencil and start kind of fine-tuning now even in this stage we don't have to draw everything perfect we're still gathering information and kind of finding the flow of the character so generally what I'll do is I'll start with the eyes and I'll keep this really loose and sketchy at this stage and I'll put in an eyebrow here one here, I might throw in her eyeball. And then I would follow this line down here. Now you don't have to draw a whole nose. You can just kind of skip around and just give subtle indications of her nose. Because like I said in the beginning of this video, less is more, especially with a female. Underneath this nose, I would just start the upper lip connect to this mouth line that I had drawn earlier. And then we have kind of a shape of lips. Now we can come back and reshape and adjust accordingly as, as we're sketching. Now, depending on her head shape, you know, generally I'll draw a very small chin and then you could actually widen her jaw if you want to. It's, it's really up to you and your own discretion, whatever your style is and whatever, you know, like I said, faces and, and people, they come in all shapes and sizes. And so there is no real wrong way as long as you get the rules down. You can break the rules once you know them. But, um, you know, I really emphasize that you should study this stuff and get to know the rules before you start, you know, coming up with your own. Um, a lot of art is aesthetic, so it's going to be personal style and style is how people are going to recognize your work, just like how you recognize your favorite artists work based on their style. Okay. So now we have kind of an underdrawing and we can start refining. Um, we can throw in where we think the hair is going to fall and you can give her any hairstyle you want. You can make her bald. You can give her short hair. You can give her shaved sides. You can give her whatever you want. Um, and then we'll come in and uh, I'll work these eyes a little bit more, put a little bit more um, emotion into them. And once again, I will lower the opacity or if you're drawing traditionally, which is what I prefer for myself, I would go ahead and erase lightly and kind of leave this underdrawing behind. So then uh, let's go ahead and lower this opacity. We can see that when we clean it up here, it looks a little better. Um, so then we can come in and we can really start fine tuning this depending on how much time and effort you want to put into this sketch. So, so I would just come in and at this point, I'm taking a little bit more time, even though we're in a, a video and I'm drawing pretty fast because I want to keep your attention, but I also really want you to learn from this. 
um, what I'm giving you here, you can go ahead and take it with you and you know practice as, as much as you possibly want to. And I believe that if you practice this often, you're just, there's no choice but to get better. So then I would go ahead and put in some eyebrows. And even though I know the hair is probably gonna cover a portion of her eyebrows, it doesn't matter. I'm still going to draw through. Uh, I can come back with an eraser later and clean up. Uh, same with these eyelashes. Now, generally, um, depending on the age of the character or the genre that I'm drawing in, I like to draw thick eyelashes. And then I would drop down, maybe indicate a little bit of a nose line here give her kind of a bubble shape for the top of the nose and then come here. Draw an indication of nostrils. Underneath, I would start working on her lips. So depending if she's smiling or what her facial expression is, and that's a whole nother video on creating emotions and expressions through facial features. Um, then I would draw on her lower lip and keeping everything very subtle. Come in, work my way up. Now I know that her ear is gonna fall somewhere around here. And ears are another one of those, uh, you know, that come in all shapes and sizes. So just make it look believable and that's fine. And then I would probably at this point just start placing some hair And this, as you can see, I'm doing this very fast. And just to show you a couple points, and, and hopefully this helps you in your journey. You can show some of your ear here. And uh, you know, you can even do a wild hair down the middle if you want. It's fun. You can just, you know, the bottom line is have fun. And you know, uh, study hairstyle, study different facial features, all that good stuff, and just get better at it. So with that said, I'm gonna stop here on this one and then show you how to draw a female body. Um, if you want, I could do a three quarter view, but let's see, we're running on 12 minutes here. I don't want to spend too much time. Female body, let's go ahead and create another layer. And um, so we know, as we discussed earlier, we have these these curves here um, and that's what a female is all about she's about her curves she's got feminine energy and you know if we're drawing a head-on uh, sketch what we'd want to do is just capture a few of the elements that we discussed earlier like one of them being she has a narrow upper chest and then that drops down to her hips that are a little wider and these don't have to be perfect. Um, you can shape and resize and adjust as you're going. She's got her legs that kind of come back in. And then she's got her shoulders. Now remember, from her shoulders, her arm's going to come inward and then kind of flow outside like this and kind of just follow her curves. And then from the middle, we'll place her neck and we'll place a head shape. And of course, of course, we can come back and make proper adjustments later. We're just, I like to call this stage of sketching, you know, the data input or information gathering. And you're just gathering all the information that you want for your sketch. And then you'll come back and, and make proper edits and adjustments. So we have here the general shape of a female. We would know that as soon as you looked at this, even if it were for a split second, we would pretty much know that this is a female or feminine character, right? Then uh, what we would do is, you know, look at where these hands fall. They fall mid, mid thigh. So we want her hands to fall somewhere around mid thigh as well. Um, that's a general shape. Now, if we wanted to draw a head, which we don't have a um, example here, but if we wanted to draw this in three quarters and 
let's try and do this in less than five minutes. Um, I would just draw a circular spherical shape. And then depending on which way she's looking, I would kind of divide that like this. So we have this bigger area here, which is closer to us. And we're going to see more of, um, and then we have this area over here, which we're seeing less of, right? So it's divided. We would assume that this is the halfway point. And then from the, this portion here where it touches the bottom of the sphere, we can draw that line straight down. And then from this curve, we can just connect this to that line. And this line would indicate her chin. And then we would draw this chin up at an angle, which would represent her jawline, pop it back upwards, throw in kind of an ear shape. And there you have it. There we have a three quarter view. And then what we could do is kind of find where her eyes would go. Since she's looking kind of straight ahead, we would put her eyes somewhere around here. Now, when I say somewhere around here, it's because we're constantly making adjustments and figuring out where things go. We know as long as we have the proximity, we can work with that. A lot of this stuff becomes very intuitive, but if you find yourself guessing or forcing, then that's when you have to kind of step away and look at what you're doing. Uh, maybe even give yourself a few minutes, step away, come back and kind of find any kind of areas that you feel like you're struggling with and uh, take another look at them. Okay, so from here, we have kind of a three quarter view. So one thing about three quarter view is it's in a, it's a form of foreshortening, which means anything closer to us is going to be bigger and we're gonna see more of. So if we were drawing in her eye, we'll see more of this eye than we would of this eye. Now the size difference wouldn't be that big because she's not that far away. We're just talking inches here, but it is tilted further. So like this nose point would be on the other side of the center line. And then underneath we would just draw in her lip and shape it in. Keep in mind that this does not have to be perfect. Always keep that in mind because we can come back and erase and make our adjustments later. Her eyebrows, depending on her mood, you know, generally the closer they are to the eye, the more serious or relaxed she could be. And then if they're further from the eye, then she might be surprised or happy. Um, and I could show you an example of that if you'd like. Uh, so you can see here, her eyebrows are closer, take them away. And Let's say that her eyes were up here. She looks a little bit more innocent. Um, if we open her mouth, maybe she would look a little bit more shocked. But anyway, I like when I'm drawing these types of characters for demonstration, I like to keep the eyebrows a little closer to the eye just to give it kind of that model-esque look. Now this eyebrow that's going away from us, I like to kind of wrap it around. See this little U shape here? wrap it around to give kind of a curvature uh, appearance. And then come down here, give her a little cheekbone, and then bring this in. And kind of just remember these little shapes and elements. Her ear, you know, uh, depending on how big her ear is, and some girls or females have small ears, some have bigger. It's really up to you as the artist to determine that. A lot of this stuff is just general aesthetics and, and, and taste. And it eventually kind of incorporates itself into your style. Um, okay, and you've probably noticed a lot of your favorite artists, uh, one of the reasons you recognize their art is because a lot of their character features look the same and that's that creates consistency. So then we have a uh, placement of our eyeballs here in the middle and then we can determine you know, where her hairline would be. So I like to point from where this ear meets the jawline. I like to point inward a little bit, bow out, and then go all the way across. 
and then depending on where her her part starts sometimes a part might start here on the side sometimes it might go down the middle um, then I would just start formulating you know hair from that part line and that's just a general you know uh, hairstyle and you can you can change this around as much as you want and then from here um, what we would do is go ahead and um, create another layer we'll e we'll go ahead and erase this if you're drawing traditionally or we'll lower the opacity if you're drawing digitally and by the way I'm using uh, procreate on the iPad so if you have an iPad this is what I would recommend uh, it's very versatile and easy to use and I also recommend getting a screen protector um, that's paper like you know there's I think there's even a company out there called paper like and so at this point and what and the reason I recommend that is because it gives it a little bit more tooth so it doesn't feel you, you still feel like you're drawing on glass but not as much this gives it a little bit more pull on the pencil and um, I'm not hearing that glass sound as much so it allows me to adapt a little easier because I'm you know I'm a traditional artist by nature so some people love drawing digitally and some people despise it and I think when you have this paper like um, screen protector it kind of gives you a happy medium so now I'm just adding in and finessing a couple details. Now, I haven't drawn in any type of uh, eyelashes at this point, so I'll do that now. Just thicken them up. I'm not giving her too, too much eyelash. And then I come down here and um, see I have my underdrawing, so I know where the nose falls. So I know I don't have to draw every single line there. And then underneath, I would just start her upper lip and just start formulating a lip. And remember that we're going to see more of the lip that's closer to us and then less of the lip that's further away because she's three, three quarters. And so we're not going to, you know, visually, we're not going to see the full lip. Okay. And then from here, what I would do is underneath her ear, I would just draw in the back of her neck and just start indicating where her neck would be there's a muscle here that connects to the back of the ear and then I would go ahead and start drawing some hair now I recommend that you study hair um, study your own study your friends your family study movies study cartoons study comics study all artists and just you know become very the way that you become confident at drawing anything is repetition. And the way that you repeat correctly is, you know, studying the art first, because if you keep repeating the same mistakes and you're not making any progress, you're going to have this defeated feeling afterwards. And you might even give up, and we don't want that. A lot of people give up because they're not seeing the progress that they want, and they're being very hard on themselves. And, uh, you know, that's not ideal because you have to realize like this stuff takes time to learn. I put in thousands and thousands of hours and I'm still learning. So, you know, keep that in mind. Okay, so this is a general sketch. Um, we're not trying to, you know, draw a masterpiece here. But let's see what it looks like if we take away the underdrawing. Okay, so we can see like there's still some more to draw. But you can see also that we've captured the feminine qualities of her face that we want. Um, she's got kind of a boxier face. She's not super narrow. Um, but yeah, there you go. And I think we'll end this video on that note. Um, and that's how we draw a female. And if you have any questions or you want me to draw something else or you want me to go deeper into this, please let me know. You can follow me on Instagram, um, either Comic Art Mastery or my personal art um, account, which is at Van Orden Art. That's V-A-N-O-R-D-E-N. -E and thank you for joining me. Um, I look forward to showing you the next video. And if you have any questions, let me know. Please like and comment and subscribe. I'm just now starting YouTube. So if it's something that kind of takes off, I'll keep doing these. All right. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.